This episode is brought to you by Cars R Us. Cars R Us is your number one stop shop for purchasing your next vehicle. New or used, lease or finance, any make, any model. Forget about going to the car dealership, Cars R Us goes to you. Think of it as the Uber Eats of car purchasing. Cars R Us delivers to any state in the US. Once again, Cars R Us on Instagram. Now back to the show. What's up guys? Did you guys want us to call you by, by your government names or or you wanna just keep it uh Keep it chill, man. I know. Thank you for uh, first of all, thank you for inviting us. Of course, yeah, of course, bro. I think it's our first podcast together, right? It's our first podcast nice. together for sure. So this is gonna be one for the books. For sure, for sure. We're, we're so I mean, let's let's crack it open, bro. Let's let's of course, open. bro. I was waiting for that. Of yeah. course, because <laughs> we gotta put it next to the mic. Oh yeah, ASMR right there. No, it'll get it real good. Oof. That sounded real crisp yeah. in my ears. <laughs> Casalu, baby. All right. All right, brother. Salud. 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 I haven't drank alcohol in I don't know how long, bro. But it's it's smooth, though. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth. But, um, so let's get to know you guys a little bit more. So we have Gabriel and Ricardo. So uh, tell us a little little bit about yourselves. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) where, where, Where are you guys from? Yeah, yeah, I think that's when I hit it, where I, where I was going to start. We're both from Venezuela. Yep. Oh, okay. Actually. Oh, okay. Venezolano, 100%. Chamar. Chamaco. Uh, but I'm from Valencia. Okay. Which is two hours away from, from Caracas. Caracas, okay. which is where I'm from. Oh, nice. And we, yeah. met, we met in college. Met in college. College over there? Here. Oh, here. Yeah. Well, the story, you want to go for it? No, it's in, in North Carolina. I mean, right. and I think we're, we, <laughs> which random. may sound random. I mean, we we have oddly similar stories there because mm-hmm. of aunts, specifically okay. aunts that lived in North Carolina. In my case, it's quite. I mean, I think it's kind of funny because I used to tell people in in North Carolina that you know when people from my school would go to Disneyland, I would be like. Hey, I'm going to Smithfield, North Carolina. <laughs> which a little, is like, a little different. <laughs> it's a little which different. Which I feel like we need to put a link here. Yeah. If anyone from Smithfield is watching. Yo, shout out Smithfield. Shout out to Smithfield. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> and, but if not, uh, look it up. And my my aunt had come to the States. Yeah. Honestly, as you can imagine, as an immigrant. And... And when she, she first came to Miami and then went up north through a friend and and yeah when me and my my brother my sister were kids our parents would literally bring us to north carolina and that was our first first really exposure to yeah. to the u.s and and well later it would get tied up with with nc state nice. which is a big part oh, so of okay. casa luke already oh, so so when when you used to come back from class the teacher would ask oh how was everyone's break you're like i went to smithfield north carolina <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's yes that's awesome i mean my i i came from a you know typical middle class yeah. family that i feel like everyone relates to like yeah, yeah that that i'm sure everybody watching this will relate to and literally that was the story oh i went to the u.s but my story is different to the ones my yeah. classmates are gonna tell so <laughs> There's that. Nice. And how, how about you, uh, Ricardo? Yeah, so I'm, like Gabriel said, I'm from Caracas. Um, really, I ended up in North Carolina because of a couple aunts. Actually, one aunt from my mom's side of the family moved to Raleigh. Yeah. And then another one from my dad's side of the family moved to Raleigh, too. Okay. And so they're like, I was like, in that time, I was in complete denial of studying here in the States. Yeah. I wanted to study back home because I had been accepted to the best engineering school back home. Uh, but my mom was, my mom and my dad both went to college here in the U.S. So they were like, you at least got to do a year in the U.S. Okay. And so the plan was to send me to do like almost like a sixth year of high school mm-hmm. in Raleigh, North Carolina. So, and live with one of my aunts. I ended up going to Raleigh, moved to Raleigh. Yeah. But actually when I got there, the guys from the high school were like, yo, yo, yo you graduated already what the fuck are you trying to do here <laughs> and we're like we're like we couldn't we couldn't say anything yeah right and so i'm literally we're driving back to my aunt's place and we're like i already moved here like what the fuck am i gonna do and so i started an english program at nc state which 
a couple months later, that's when I met Gabriel and uh, the whole kind of Latino crew that was yeah. that was at state. Yeah. And from there on, like, you know, Venezuela got a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like school. Cubano, so I know how that goes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I Venezuela got goes. a little bit more complicated. Yeah. The school was public, and it was going in through strikes. And honestly, I was kind of like opening my eyes a bit. Like I feel like NC State has been such an important part of who we are. Yeah. Not necessarily because of the school per se, but like the experience of like opening your eyes, really looking at different things. And then obviously, it's crazy that Casalu ended up coming out of friendship that we built 10 years ago uh, at State. school you know um yeah. it's random yeah as fuck but at the I, same I, time, I mean at least he left shit. like college or something like <laughs> like he left with, with, with a good like uh experience from it oh for sure yeah for sure i mean i i, I is I there a big it. population of venezuelans in north carolina like did you guys like <laughs> you guys were you guys like not that we're aware of i mean <laughs> yeah I, I think you know if you, if you think about it most yeah. of them probably came to Florida. Right. Beginning, and there's also a lot uh, that went to Houston um, yeah. because of oil-related oil. work. Oh, okay. And, but really, from there, it, it kind of just go up north. And, right, right. And North Carolina is one of those stops that um, that's that's on the way. Yeah, it was fate, bro. It was yeah, like, it really yeah. was. It sounds like fate. <laughs> it was like yeah. that that Dios, right? Yeah, <laughs> really, really. yeah that's yeah. exactly right. I mean. Especially, you know, like Ricardo said, he wasn't fully on board with yeah. with being and staying there. And m yeah, my side came from from a different side, but it worked out yeah. pretty well. So, yeah. uh, and not to cut, cut in front of you. No, you good, good. So, you guys met at state. What happened there? Like, you guys formed this friendship throughout the years, and like, like yeah. what like what happened in between that and you guys starting like Casalu? So, I mean, specifically at state, it. I kind of touched on it a little bit, but it's Latinos have a, f a way to find each other, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> especially in a place where no one's like you yeah. necessarily. I mean, we're talking about 2012, 2013, and the reality is that to find a group that was emigrating and going to to Raleigh specifically, and that came from different corners of Latin America for us it just clicked and, yeah. and, and we built a, a group which most of them are still our best friends yeah to, to this to, day to like this we day. hang out a lot oh, with yeah. all of them wherever yeah. we're visiting and they're all over the world at this point but in the u.s but we're always when we get together it's a big party it's a big time yeah right yeah. that's like the, the, the story of latinos it's like I have family in, in Italy and yeah, Spain yeah, and everybody. Every time you get together, yeah, it's una borrachera. It's, nice. it's, it's a party. <laughs> Tropicalization. Tropicalization. Yeah, Tropicalization. We're going to get to yeah, that. we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. We're gonna get to that. We, have, we have some questions about that, too. But yeah. uh, So yeah. I think from there, I'm sure you're going to get into a couple of key things that are going to tie up everything. Uh, but that group had one thing in common, which is pretty much that all of them drank rum. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that, that's where the, the, that's the, where the, the of using the rum came from. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, all right. So, where did the idea of because like doing a seltzer come from? Because, like, as of like the last couple of years, like you see the rise of seltzers coming up, yeah. like with White Claws, Trulies, but those are like not for nothing. But and they had a big rise in colleges too. Yeah. yeah. Like that's it's usually like where it started. Like I remember, um, it, it used to be like a meme of like. Popping the white claws, it's like uh, yeah, there's no claws yeah. when you're on the claws. Mm -hmm. Like it, that, used exactly. like a, that used to be a college thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, and yeah. now they're like they looked at like, as like, oh, like it's a, the skinny drink. But right. it's like it, it, it grew up as like like the alternative for beers because it was yeah. like it was liquor. It got it's you a healthy like, more option, buzzed. Basically. Yeah. No, I mean I'll I'll pass it on to Ricardo because yeah. that the, the product component really totally it's came him. from him. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I mean you hit it. You hit the nail on the head. The alternative to beer. Um, back in college, you asked this guy, so it'd be sh like if we were chilling and the plan was not like, you know, a party party, I would be bringing like a Smirna Vice or Mike's Hard Lemonade because I don't like beer, never yeah. have. And, and so to me, the product story is, is, is that, is you saw the rise of hard seltzers. Uh, during the pandemic, it was all, let's hang out outdoors, or yeah. in a pool, you can't take glass. It's like a, this whole 
like cans became like the form right mm-hmm. like, of cool drinking thing, yeah. and yeah. so beer obviously it's not my thing and so hard seltzers was yeah, like, you're like what the next option, yeah. yeah. Right. and so i started trying a lot of them and like white claw you know i can get behind it but like it it really doesn't yeah. I know. Taste that great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It t- like Gabriel likes to say it tastes like TV static, and I agree. <laughs> and then I tried High Noon, and I was like, oh shit, you can make this out of liquor. Yeah. Fuck. But like, and this is a story that goes back to, back to, I guess, me as a kid a little bit. Um, I always was the kid that liked, you know, the NBA, hip hop, and all that sort of thing back in Venezuela. And I was born here in the U.S. in New York, like all yeah. these different things. And my friends decided that I was the gringo of the group, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so since I was the gringo, I was like, dude, if my friends see me fucking pale as fuck in Atlanta drinking a high noon, they're going to fucking You're like, That's destroy yeah. my yeah. reputation. <laughs> <is> <laughs> over. Like, my right. whole reputation in WhatsApp is going to be destroyed, right? <laughs> and so I was like, but really like critically thinking like why why isn't anybody doing this with from a latino approach in a way mm-hmm. that it's not like corona seltzer that doesn't mean anything yeah, you yeah. Know? like the beer has legacy but the corona seltzer they're just stamping their brand on a on a seltzer because you it's know nielsen is data yeah, yeah. is telling them right, oh yeah. this is the next big thing but it, there's no thought to it and then mm-hmm. and then the rum component going back to college our friends are from guatemala peru salvador ecuador uh, you name it like yeah. there's literally from everywhere in Latin America and we all connected through rum like it was at the beginning in North Carolina to give you a little bit of context on North Carolina it's um what is it called it's a Frank c- control state. control state so all liquor is controlled by the government okay. so if mm. it's liquor it has to be bought in a store called ABC stores and ABC okay. stores have a very limited you know supplier they yeah, don't like, open on Sundays they're not open. Oh, exactly. okay. Tough. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you have to buy the South, on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> the, the South, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. South. But um, they didn't have much rums. And you can imagine, we're from Latin America. We are used to high quality stuff. Yeah. yeah. They had your typical, like, Bacardi or, like, Captain yeah. Morgan or stuff like that that we don't not used to drink. So when, when we used to go back home, the whole thing was like, dude, you're going back to Guatemala? Like, bring, bring me some back. good yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I would go back to Venezuela and it's like, bring the good shit, you know? And we would kind of like, oh, tonight, tonight we're, we're going out hard. Real, yeah. we're, we're pulling sending. out the, yeah. we're pulling yeah. out the Santa <laughs> Teresa, you know? And like, to me, yeah. that was like, why isn't anybody drinking that? And then going back to the story, you know, high noon is vodka, yeah. sparkling water, and a little bit of flavor. And what do, what do we used to drink in college once we moved on past Coke, rum and Coke? It was rum, soda water. Yeah. And lemon. Yep. So right. to us, it's not like we're reinventing the wheel. It's just a drink that we always had forever. So I started making it my own in my kitchen. I bought a soda stream, which for the people. Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. It's like the little fizzy water, like. Yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. one that's yeah. DIY. You can get it at Target. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he got it. At I got it at Target. I see what I mean, like, <laughs> Target. Shout out Target. Shout out Target. <laughs> Target. <laughs> um, so I got it one day. I, I woke up and told my girlfriend, like, hey, I'm buying a soda stream. Yeah. Went and bought it and then started making experiments until it got to summer and then my friends were all trying it and having it at the pool. And that was kind of like, he was there and it was like, shit, this is really good. There's something yeah. We here. got something here. Yeah. Which by the way, we need to make a clip of that for a second. This is completely unrelated, but when we get to Target, we have to be like, this all started with Target. Yes. yes. With it the social. If there's it any Latino who runs the show at Target. Yeah. Give us a call. <laughs> I think the CMO is Latino, right? He used to be. Uh, hmm. Rudy or something, I think. Garcia, no? Anyway, that's kind of the story of the product. So. Yeah. No, but that that's like uh, an, a, an example of like using a, a good like insight like that you, that you were saying like, yo, like there's no, there, there's no like, you, you don't have the Latino flavor in what you're in what you're, you you grew up drinking right you have to like kind of settle for like not settle for high noon but it's like there's all these other like uh brands like you said corona seltzer where it's like it it was just inauthentic like right. it wasn't like uh it wasn't thought out it was just oh we, this is bud light bud light seltzer 
Right. <laughs> or like this is like it's an afterthought yeah, yeah it's a knee jerk reaction there's no yeah. love in it it's just literally like oh this is just what's hot, what's hot right now we gotta put it out what it's exactly right. literally like it's some person looking at the data and seeing like hey this is a category we need to get into which nothing wrong with that but like yeah. you see the difference when it's yeah. not thought right. out like they're not doing it right yeah that's kind of that's kind of i was like that's kind of how we started too yeah like how, how we started like uh podcasting too was where like you know I'm sure you're familiar with like the shows like across the, like the Chantes, the Moluscos, like, but we we're like, yo, you know what? There's not really anybody doing it here. Yeah. In we're the like, States. yeah. There, there's a ton of like talent in Miami with like Latinos that are like trying to like creatives, especially. Yeah, yeah. That they don't really have a platform to go on or like they don't have a like somewhere to like kind of showcase themselves. And we're like, you know what? Like, what if we do that? that kind formula like, that's worked in other countries totally. yeah literally. and why don't we just bring that here and there's also like a couple other places like doing that too now. yeah like like no jumper was a big example for me yeah like how they have like the west coast but they also get like a lot like when i watch their show there's a lot of artists on there that i had no idea existed right but because mm-hmm. they're like a west coast scene so that's yeah. kind of like the idea we had here because miami is such a hub now for spanish artists yeah because yeah. i like the of music course. side like he 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 means like the whole latino culture like entrepreneurs artists everything I like the music, yeah. like okay. the, the, the reggae tonedos and you know young chimis and all them. Like yeah. I, that's my goal. That's who mm-hmm. I want to get on the pod. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's a, um, he's yeah, a I'm trap. a young chimmy, huge fan. Yeah. Like, I, I love. We'll get him on. No shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> hey, stay tuned. <laughs> stay less. <laughs> but uh, yeah, bro. It's and that and hopefully we get to have the same success in our lane as you guys have exactly. had in yours so far. But uh, how long have you guys uh, been doing this for? It's a journey. So and I wanted to say because I think that's a perfect segue of really right. how like the whole com- concept of the brand really truly mm. develop is that same frustration. Yeah. Um, I remember when Gabriel first tried it, um, and I don't think we gave enough context on, on ourselves, but anyway, right. when Gabriel, Gabriel has always been involved in an entrepreneurship world. Yeah. Uh, he would, ran the entrepreneurship clinic at NC State and the accelerator program there. And so Gabriel has always been involved in the startup scene, like the but business. more from from a tech side of things. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Wow. Because it's highly technical, like type of startups that right. were coming through yeah. uh, NC State. And so when he first tried it, I remember he never, like I never even really approached him for anything because I never thought he would be interested. But we all, like, he has always had this passion for music, like very deep and for reggaeton, of course. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that frustration was what came, made us like realize that we needed to build a brand that was more like, looked more like a Red Bull than an actual yeah, like seltzer brand yeah, itself. Great. And so uh, it's that lack of platform that we felt like, okay, why isn't there no Latinos in like a Tim Ferry show and right. stuff like that? Right. Which that's is how, like. That's exactly how kind of like tying it up together with your concept of, of the podcast and getting yeah. out a platform. Yeah. You know, Complex had the blueprint. Right. Uh, amazing. If you have, in, you know, the Scooter Brown episode. It's yeah, yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Team Fer- Ferris actually happened a couple a couple months after I tried the first version of Casa Lu, Okay. Which Ricardo was calling at the time Tropicalation. Tropicalation. Okay. <laughs> uh, part of my frustration, like personally, that, that then we realized we shared... Um, and I knew I could share that with Ricardo because he would be the one who would understand that. And that's really what triggered the real conversation to start the company. Um, I I couldn't like fathom like why is Tim Ferriss, for example, not yeah. having a Latino on the podcast or multiple one after the other. Right. And then at the same time, it's like it's not his role. It's not his responsibility to do it. Right. Um, but the magic truly happens when. You know, like us, we were the kids who grew up in the NBA. Yeah, you could you could say that's part of black culture, really. Yeah, like yeah. the one that we consume, right? Like, but it's flash over to us. Yeah, yeah. And it, so it's like, how can we truly build a platform that gives a voice to the Latino, and or a brand that gives a voice to the Latino, not only with Latinos, but beyond. Right. But, and it's about being authentic to the Latino because that's critical. Yeah, if you're inauthentic to it then you miss the first step. It but shows then, like Yeah, people know offensive. people know a fake. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. And then when, when us and we get it and we feel empowered, then that's when we share it with other cultures mm-hmm. and we are like, hey, I wanna represent 
uh, who I am and, and what I am. So. Oh, so it can. It's there's a lot to to the can, honestly. From from a, a design standpoint, like a lot of the decisions were made like very thoughtfully. Of course. And so for us, the the skinny can didn't represent anything. Mm -hmm. Has no legacy with our culture. Um, honestly, has no legacy with no culture really. Yeah, it's just something they. It's just something came that up they with. did from a different marketing standpoint. Mm -hmm. So. Um, actually going with the standard can was a differentiator yeah. but to us it also told a little bit of the story of the legacy of like the beer that we grew up drinking you know like yeah. not myself but like all my friends they all used to drink beer that way yeah if you look at it even like the top lid which is gold it kind of pays homage to modelo but yeah modelo so doing that was was part of the part of the thought process behind the brand and everything I like that because I know Happy Dad basically did the same thing with their can. Yeah. They theirs, said they didn't. Theirs was more like going to make it more like on the masculine mm -hmm. side. Yeah. Instead of the from skinny. Their, yeah, from yeah. their side. And it's like they don't they didn't see the use for a skinny can. Exactly. I mean, I think there were other constraints as well. Like from a supply chain perspective, remember that we we're coming out of the pandemic, basically. And White Claw and high noon and the ones that were already using the skinny can and what's also trendy right they basically had all the supply chain um so yeah they, they controlled the everything they, the space correct and and in our case was oh well it's even more accessible to just do a standard can that's right. from a logistics supply chain side. Oh, okay right yeah no that makes sense yeah true I mean, and now that we're kind of talking about the branding and like why the can, and I was telling you off air but right before we started that, like that's one of the things that I appreciate the most, especially in like, I feel like a, like, like new companies, especially it's super important to have your branding on point. Yeah. And you guys have it like from on the can, like the, like just everything, like the colors, the green is like super prevalent in like your social media. Yeah. yeah so like, is there a reason for, for all that or? Yeah, there is. Everything is. You guys very, say everything is thought out. Everything so. is everything is extremely thought out. Everything that you see in our brand is something that we probably spent more time than we needed to <laughs> thinking about and seeing. And it always goes back to how does it represent our culture, right? And you know, Ricardo uses the model example for the for the topper, which they they truly focus especially on the rim, not as much on the topper. But it's even like if you if you see a topper, one of the other examples we use at the time was, I don't know in Latin America, you always see like that older man or even the reggaeton videos yeah. with like a gold watch. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like, how do you bring also elegance to, to something that may be taken as common? Right. Um, the 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 front part of it is the door. It's an open door to our culture. Uh, that's why you see basically that there's a world. Yeah. It's like behind it, it it even almost looks like a window like you're seeing through like, right oh, yeah it's a, wel it's an, welcome to our it's house it's an invitation yeah. Yeah. it's a welcoming uh to it and you you can see the back door too yeah which is that's why you see the arch also in the back right um and naturally the name which took us a long time <laughs> to to get to well what were some of the versions before yeah, before like, you guys landed on casalu the first one was maria isla maria you know Maria first, yeah, and then we did Isla Maria, and then it got shut down, and then the the final official one was Casa Lu. Maria was because That's that true. came from Ricardo. Really, he realized that all our mothers had the the Maria. <laughs> <laughs> they have Maria on their name. Like, right. I was Marisabel. like, Isabel. I was like, randomly, I texted Gabriel, like, dude, um, <laughs> what's your mother's name? He's like, Marisabel. I'm like, shit, my mom is Maria Gabriela. Let me ask Gustavo, our third partner, like, what's, what's his mom's name? And he goes, Paula Maria. We're like, that's it, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> like that's the one. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has yeah, it. Know. Delia Maria, that's my it mom's makes... name. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Honduran, bro, so, so it's like just a... So oh, listen just... to this, right? Like, the, the concept behind it was also like, oh, there's always someone who's... I mean, the whole concept of it was making you feel like at home, at, at your right, safe right. place, yeah. but having fun, right? It's like being yeah. your, at your house, yeah. like at your right, home, right. at your grandparents' house. 
My grandma's name is Maria. <laughs> uh, but so that's really where the, the root of that concept came. And then it's funny because we sent it to our potential trademark lawyer. And we're like, dude, we totally have the name. And this guy's name is Ed. Ed Timberlake. He was North, like, he's like, you don't North, have the trademark from, from Maria. From, <laughs> from North Carolina. In North Carolina. And then he was like, hmm, how do I put this to you guys? You can't trademark you, Maria. You cannot <laughs> trademark Maria. <laughs> like it's not gonna happen drop it cool not gonna happen yeah. you gotta find something that's unique that's defensible that can be made blah 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 whatever and we're like oh shit we thought we had it and then at the end of the, his email he puts oh, by the way my mom's name is Maria <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> Dude, shout, out Ed. <laughs> shout out to Ed fucking Timberlake right. <laughs> fucking Maria Timberlake how yeah. <laughs> And then we were like, okay, can we add something to give it a twist? And we called it Isla Maria. So it was more of a destination of that feeling. And we created a whole concept around it. We actually pretty, we liked it a lot. And that was where the root for the branding came from. Uh, being like the imagery of it, the initial imagery for it. He also shut that down. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, guys, you don't get it. No yeah. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> no, Enough with the Maria. No, man, he shut down everything. Oh, yeah? Like, we this thing a- took, like, we probably showed, like, put in front of him, like, 30 names. Yeah, which Easy. we had a spreadsheet Easy. of yeah. 600 names. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. Insane. Well, Do you I- remember that one little period we had when we were trained? When we were trained? Because Don, Bro, will okay. you tell it? Yeah. So... When we came up with the idea for the domino table, so I'll give you like a, just a quick story of how we came up with that. So when we used to record, like it literally was us, us like being fans of podcasts, like be like, you know what, we should fucking do our own, like kind of like who we were talking about, like there's no one really doing this shit, like yeah, like yeah. especially like Latinos, like that are not like the huge like Chente Moruco, like. Well, when we first started, it was originally Dude, like we just, were just talking shit, we're talking shit, literally, like, like, you know, like, was, like like half the world wanted to make a every, podcast. Yeah, everyone's first podcast. Yeah, was talking just shit. talking right. shit. So. Um, we didn't have anywhere to record, so what we did was I had in my my old backyard I had this shed where we used to store like um, like shovels and you know stuff for like the garden and shit. So I cleared it out, and then I was like, you know what, we can this could be our makeshift studio because it had like you know good sound whatever. Mm-hmm. And I and we we didn't need to do video, we just did sound. Yeah. Right. This is back. This this before. Damn, like, that's true. This is before even that. Yeah, we just had the one mic in the middle. We had one mic on a domino table, and we used to sit on coolers. Cause we had no chairs, yeah, and that's man. the only thing that could fit there. So we used to sit on coolers. Nice. We drank wine from a fucking uh, red solo cup. Oh yes, like, bro. Yeah, super hot. Yeah, that'd be a great setup. So, so yes, bro. Like so, you guys need to recreate that again. Exactly. Oh, when, yeah, when we go, have the go back to the when we get our table. house. When we get the for bread sure, for that, bro. We're recreating that same setup. Yeah, Because it, it was amazing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like the, we were like, you know what? I'm gonna just name it the domino table. That's what we're talking on. That's like yeah. And also, like, in Latino culture, like, that's when, like, that's, like, the, the equivalent of, like, the barbershop. Right. For, like, the black culture is, like, the domino table, habla mierda, like, you got, you talk, sometimes you have your realest conversations. Right. At a domino table. At a domino yeah. table yeah. while Fucking you're, like, in the it. heat of the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, we're, like, you know what? Like, we're just naming that. Obviously, bro, we just did it. Like, no check for anything. Like, yeah. we just yeah, said, yeah, yeah. You went what, for the, it. what the fuck are we going to do? Whatever. Fast forward, we interview uh, this entrepreneur, uh, visionary, he's, manager for an artist named Gonzi. You, yeah, you guys yeah. might have known him. But yeah. he was like, hey, look, like, uh, you guys need to get like your your your, 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 trademark, your legal yeah, stuff on, yeah, yeah. in order. He goes, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm saying this because like, you guys are going to want to protect the name, protect the brand. So whatever, uh, we, we hope we got together. We're like, you know what? Like, let's, uh, let's make this an, a, a company. Let's make this an LLC. So we did so we can protect the name. Because we're like, you know, like, how the fuck does no one have this yet? Yeah. So we did yeah. that. Um, and then instantly we're like, you know what? Like, we 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 bought the the, the LLC Domino Table Studios because uh-huh. we had a bigger picture that we're like, you know what? Eventually we're gonna want to grow this to be just more than our show. We're gonna want to have other people, other Latinos having their own show just above the umbrella. Right. Yeah. That is Domino Table. Yeah. Whatever. Still the vision. Still you know the vision. I mean? But, yeah, but yeah. that's like the overall. Yeah. Like bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And, uh, bro, it, it wasn't until then that we were like. You know, we should probably look to see if the Domino table is taken on Instagram. Yeah, the name. Yeah. To this day, I'm still trying to negotiate with that guy. Yeah. 
And he he wants, just won't give up. He, he wants like a ridiculous amount of he, money. No, he just wants us name. to name a price first. Yeah. And we're like, bro, like, what do you want? Like, he's not using it for anything. And which is what pisses me off the most. Offer him 20 bucks. Dude, I would offer him 100. But he doesn't like... He's, he's, like he's the worst person to like... If, you, if you're seeing this right now, like... Bro, answer the DMs. Please. Like, <laughs> because he's the worst person to get in contact with. Like, I've... He, he, he like pretty much closes like he doesn't go back on for like at all yeah. six months Thanks. and it's like all right bro like we're pretty sure that the person who has casa lu on instagram has never been on instagram except for the day that's bro that's like the guy that has like my my name on instagram like without the underscore yeah that, that guy has never been on instagram since casa lu is taken yeah, yeah. really casa lu, yeah. alone that's why you guys have to drink casa lu no. yes that's, that's right. crazy but yeah i feel like every company like that has like their legal troubles where it's like bro like this fucking name is taken like yeah we went through we tried to change the name like oh yeah so i was getting yeah we had a day where we were like we're just gonna figure out let's come out let's come up with a bunch of names it can be domino table what could it be? be yeah hmm. right bro as someone who names things for a living like i'm a copywriter i write like i've named companies before yeah. for my job Bro, I, I, we couldn't fucking name this place. Like, we couldn't name it. It's like, we, we threw out a bunch of options. I wrote, like, literally, like, you said, like, 600 names. Nothing, like, stuck. Nothing was, like, nothing, nothing felt, felt right. Nothing felt like yeah. us. Like, right. nothing felt like the story that we had built. Like, and it was like, bro, fuck it. We're just, Donald Table Studios. This is a Donald Table podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Like, and it's, it's it. all under that. It's like, yeah. like, it was a You'll fucking... figure it out later. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. For us, was because, it, you know, it was something that was physically in the market. If, right but it, but i think for you guys you should be fine yeah forever yeah. especially well like, yeah that our, guy's never gonna check his instagram <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no our, our our the name thing is crazy like because when you when you think so much about that thing you want it yeah. to be named right you know yeah like, of course yeah. it's so hard to like and you get like shit but is this gonna work like it has to be catchy it has to be like cultivating our, our frustration got to a level that we knew we wanted a, a six letter name three syllables yeah. modelo corona that type of thing and so we were kind of locked in and, and knew a little like kind of like a structure and we knew what we wanted to like our mission yeah but we got to a, a frustration level so big that we i remember we put a bunch of words yeah, and then I put them in a it. in a word mixer in the in internet yeah, like yeah. word scrambler or some yeah, shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Those are always Google, good. enter all these things come out, and I think I don't remember the story correctly how you pieced it out, but it was like it so, wasn't exactly right. No, I. I so regard we're doing this like live. Yeah. And and I'm I found like at my house I had like a big. I don't know how it's called in English, but a bond paper, which is like just yeah. a big sheet of paper that it's bigger than normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started writing down the names there that I was seeing on the word. Um, on the word bank. like Yeah, the, the word yeah, bank. Yeah, whatever. And I figured it out, figured it out. And then I, I remember one was like Pamara or like, Something like Pama, that. Pa Maria. Mm, Sorry, like, Diego. Maria's always yeah. there. No, no, no. <laughs> always in the mix, bro. He started, he started yeah. with... Yeah. Yeah, Pa Maria, but that wasn't going to fly. <laughs> so it was some other place. And then that ended up being a city like near the East Bank. And it was like alcohol and that, that probably not going to fly. Yeah. And the other one was Saluca. And I looked at it and I was like, hmm, what if we flip this to Casalu? I still have my doubts. Like it wasn't, but yeah. I still the guys, and we put it in like our top two, mm -hmm. well, top three, and then ended up being top two, and then it ended up winning. It ended up winning, but because of the meaning, it was yeah. very clear for us. Like the way we chose the words that went into the word scrambler was based on the um, the pillars for the brand. So we knew that casa was part of it. We already liked salu yeah. without the d, because um, it's how we pronounce yeah, it. Yes, salu. Mm -hmm. So Great. that's really yeah. where, where it came from. I mean, it clicked in that way. It's, it's our home, it's our heritage, and it's a Louis, how we share our culture with, with everybody and invite, you know, uh, yeah. through that open door. Right. No, I, I, I love that, bro. So kind of fast forward. All right, so you picked the name. What was, like, the first challenge that you guys were like, were like, do you know what we're, like, in for right now? Like, oh, yeah. Well, 
the first challenge it's funny because the name came after that but the first cha first challenge initially we come up with a concept right like we're just very quickly to take you yeah. one step back before to go you know before going 10 forward uh, Ricardo and I did this exercise for for the brand aspect to it where I looked at my Instagram explore page he looked at his and I, I look at mine and I'm like dude there's so many of these podcasts but they're all talking about like who did Anita last have sex with yeah yeah there's a bunch of trash yeah very into reggaeton but Ricardo looks at his and it's a lot of the Anglo influences yeah and we were like okay like there has to be a brand that truly pieces these two things together and, and becomes that platform for Latino culture yeah cool what do we do first like is it the platform or is it the product and that was part of really that initial process and in order to figure that out partly bef besides the experiments we were doing internally was let's get into the college startup accelerator or let's try to do it yeah mm -hmm. uh, i remember i was kind of because at that time i was also working at state so i was kind of like in the middle but i'm like pushing the guys to do it right. and then until they're like yeah i mean we, we probably should so we we kind of fire away and 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 we got in which was very it was tough because mm -hmm. it was 60 companies competing for five spots and that was competing against companies that could really prove demand yeah. easily because most of them are software companies right, right. You set up a website put it in front of people see if they like it or not can i take it from there whereas we had a physical product and if you got into the accelerator, then that meant you'd get five thousand dollars. Like startup. Startup. Yeah. And can't really do shit. shit. No. With five thousand. Yeah. yeah. And we had to give Ed Timberlake some of that. Oh, of, <laughs> of course. course. <laughs> of course. <Ed laughs> to do some of that work. Actually, very cheap. Ed Timberlake's <laughs> always gonna get his. <laughs> I hope he bought some food for his mom. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was first of all it was good validation right no i mean like i think what i think the, the the logic behind going into the accelerator was very simple you know it's like we're all latinos we all love rum we all love what's happening in the scene and we understand it very clearly that doesn't mean we have you know something right and right. And, and and for us getting in front of a cr like a competition like the accelerator where <clears throat> excuse me you have like a panel of judges from many different things who are highly sophisticated investors mm -hmm. and out of those out of 60 companies we get pieced out as one that has potential and should go through the accelerator it was to us like you know the first step like yeah. the first step to to realize okay there is something here that has potential and I think, you know, that those, like, that mentality comes from Gabriel really understanding the startup world and, like, essentially making us try to do little tests to validate that what we're doing kind of makes sense. Yeah. So that's what we've never, in a way, I've, I've always get asked, like, dude, when was the moment that you know, mm -hmm. that you knew, like, oh, shit. This like, is, we got something here. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it never truly felt that way because we were constantly trying to validate mm -hmm. ourselves and like there was always a next step and so we never felt like it's never felt crazy to us any right. of the things that we're doing because it's the natural next step based on the validation we got yeah. from the test before like and and not to get ahead of ourselves but we would test you like you know when we well i'll leave i'll leave it at that yeah oh, and yeah. then we'll kick in into what yeah. happened in the accelerator which essentially is what made us um Kinda, exist really yeah exist i think i mean the other note that i'll leave there for because maybe we have some people watching that yeah. or listening that think about starting a company and and when it comes down to getting investors or, or backers and, and someone who invests doesn't have doesn't mean cash necessarily but really placing a bet on 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 that vision yeah a lot of times it all comes down to you know people investing people it, they really look at the team and what they're able to execute and do. So that is something that was also part of validation for us yeah. because we knew that at that stage, for any early stage investing that happens, it's all about, okay, do we think that this team 
is the right team to execute this vision? Can they get it done? Because right. this the concept is just not far enough, right? Like, it's like, yeah, you, you, like you guys, they, right? They, like you don't have enough views for me to know like where you can go. Right. But if I'm like, you have the right vision, you're doing the work, yeah. you're putting in the hours. Yeah, maybe you'll get it to one day you'll have a podcast with a billion views. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, you're investing in the people and hoping they can figure out the concept. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Correct. So, I mean, from there, it, it was it was validation mode. Yeah, once so, again. so you guys won the accelerator. So we get in uh -huh. with five companies and they give us $5,000. And we're like, the fuck are we going to do with $5,000? We can't do shit. Got to pay some to Ed. To Ed? Yeah. And, <laughs> and um, we say, okay, we need to... There's only one thing that matters when yeah. starting a company, and it's proving that there's demand. That's that, yeah. I mean, that's the first step. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Does anyone want the shit that I'm making? Yeah. And there really was only one way to prove that, which was, okay, where do we think it's our audience? And let's put what we have in front of them and see how it goes. So for us, it went from, at that time, we were making it with the Target Soda Stream. And we said, okay, we can. We, <laughs> That's a lot of soda streams. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Those are a lot of soda streams for a single party. Facts. Yeah. We had a lot of soda streams, actually. Yeah, we had like three. We had like three or four. Always yeah. running. God. Always left running. One. Yeah. We had like one in LA. I'm thinking about it now. I can, I can picture yeah. it like just. In the kitchen. <laughs> I've, I've, I've left we, soda streams we left in multiple in LA, places. Um, we left them in a couple places. Yeah. yeah. It's, been, it's been funny. So we bought a keg on Amazon. Uh, it was 500 bucks, and we bought tickets. And we said, "Okay, where's our audience? The biggest, you know, if Florida was a country, would be the sixth biggest in consumption of yeah. rum. And if we're going to talk to a Latino and we're going to empower our community, where can we find the most Latinos in the same place? <laughs> Miami. Miami. Sounds pretty Miami. Miami. Yeah, right? yeah. So if we're going to run a test, then the three of us were at different places. Ricardo was in New York. Gustavo was in Chicago and I was in North Carolina. And we, I drove the keg down to Miami. The guys took a plane and we met at and stayed at a tiny house behind a tiny house. <laughs> in, 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 in the middle of the design district, not the design district that you think of yep. yeah like the, like the old one yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah i have some yeah. idea what you're talking about right now. i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> um we're pretty sure our neighbors old crack <laughs> every yeah. startup has to start yeah. somewhere yeah. <laughs> we, we, it was one bed that we put like horizontally so the three of us could sleep, could sleep like this for a month yeah. and we were like okay time to crash parties oh we shit. started making the shit out so, our little tiny house and crashing parties So you, you guys yeah. would go like to like UM parties or FIU parties? Like how, how did you guys be like, all right, like, wh like where do we start this off? Yeah. There's always one Latino who knows another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it, like, started, it started with, with a boat, actually. Yeah. Oh, shit. Perfect place. Yeah, I don't that's even the perfect, know. Yeah. I don't even, I, I, I'm assuming you found that boat because I didn't. Yeah. That's so. Yeah. Perfect no, place. no. We, perfect we're, vibe. We organized like a boat party with friends to kind of do the launch. I remember there were a lot of friends from state that were coming in here, like Rodrigo was here, Jaco was here. We had a lot of friends. Yeah. And so um, we organized this boat party to kind of launch it off and like take pictures. I remember we had our first photographer. Alessia. Shout out to Alessia. Thank you. That's crazy. Um, Shout out. And so she took some pictures and we already had an Instagram. It kind of had a brand. The one thing we knew from the beginning was brand was the most important thing. Yeah. And we actually brought in our designer, Lauren, shout out to Lauren, um, mm -hmm. very early on, like yeah. very, very early From on the beginning. to partner with us. From mm -hmm. even getting into the accelerator, she came in. Yeah. And so when we were coming here with a keg, we actually looked a lot more the part. Mm -hmm. So our first, one of the, the first business trip that we ever did together was going to Kentucky to the flavor house to really pick the final like flavor uh, of Casalu, right? Like the final formula. And I remember we're in Louisville. We've never been to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, shout out. Shout out Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. And so 
we 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 get there the day before we sleep and then it had to be like a 9 it was like a 9 a.m day from 9 to 4 and then we left back uh to our homes right like i left back to new york and you live back to raleigh right and and at 9 a.m we i remember we woke up a little bit late and we were scrambling so we didn't get breakfast nothing dude and, this guy. and so they make us start trying all these flavors all these flavors Honestly, right stomach just fucked up and, <laughs> and dude, fuck. dude this has alcohol in it yeah of course it's casalu multiple versions multiple of casalu ver- multiple they versions from of a to f f version five yeah, right yeah, like yeah. you would ask them like no reiterate on this one but take it down a, l- a little bit or whatever at 9 a.m First bro. sips of Casalu, in theory, they give you a bucket. Tremenda to nota, bro, at that time. <laughs> no, they give you a bucket to spit it out. Hey. But, like, it's a seltzer. You really got to go through it to really notice the aftertaste, how to fuck, like, yeah, really yeah, yeah. get to it. Right. And so we started drinking it. 9, 10 a.m., I'm completely, like, yo, like, <laughs> what's up? Like, yeah. I'm Who tropical as shit. You last I, yeah, I'm tropical as fuck. Like, yeah, yeah. What are we doing? And then... Suddenly we start trying things and the story goes like this at some part is at some point I tell Gabriel, Gabriel, play me some tropicalation right now to see if this shit hits different. And psychologically it was so crazy that we would feel like, oh no, this, now this is hitting right. Yeah. Because it was reggaeton playing in the background like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like this is it. So reggaeton has been part of like, Casa from, from, the, from the ground job. up, it's been yeah. part of Casa Lu, like yeah. throughout the whole journey. Yeah. So reggaeton, reggaeton is very important claro. in, in this story, and I think reggaeton is very important for Latinos. Of course, Super. The, um, he built the podcast around it. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we'll bring some of them to the podcast too. No, um, forgot, bro. because we see reggaeton as the, it you know a lot of a lot of music from Latin America has always crossed borders so yeah. obviously merengue salsa the, in a lot of different flavors of those genres yeah. but reggaeton was the one whether by its quality or our generation or something yeah that took us global right that is the one genre so far from Latin America that has crossed like it has crossed those, everywhere yeah from korea to anywhere yeah, yeah. in the world whether they wow. speak spanish or not yeah and to us is kind of like oh shit we saw it right like you grew up on yeah. let's say the yankee right the yankee like, tego, the, the, yankee tego, tego, the, all of them. the yeah. whole crew uh baby parrilla and then the other players that came in all and throughout and around right like then you have uh Fast forward to Avalving, who yeah. is like, okay, what if we change the connotation? You know, whatever, whatever you think about Avalving as an artist, but it's a, it's a, he it's a message. To, he it's a South America too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a storytelling of his. First of all, it's from Colombia. Second of all, yeah. it was, this is Pala Cultura, right? Like, this is... Latino for, gang. Was it's like, a Latino gang. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. It comes from there. And then you see Bad Bunny where it's like, okay, now that, that road has been paved... I'm the monster because now I have the audience, I have the talent, and I have what it takes to really take the shit global. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's gonna only gonna grow up from here. So reggaeton has always been an important part of it, and what you see in the can and what Ricardo used to call the drink before, which was tropicalation. I, I mean, my side of that story it starts very personally because I'm I'm at a pregame in 2012. I'm recently immigrated a month in from Venezuela and uh, I, I'm at a pregame with a couple of friends from high school that happen to be in Boston and visiting them and one of them comes and says hey man ya estás tropical <laughs> and instantly you yeah. just feel like like, like you know what that means. Yeah, like, you know right. what that means. Exactly. Right? You know what that means. Yeah. And it was like, holy shit, these guys didn't say, you know, no estás prendido or you're yeah, a yeah, bust. Yeah. It was like está tropical. Right. It's a vibe. It's like it's I don't a, know, yeah. It's a vibe. It's a feeling. This is more than this. And what I did was I took that name and turned it into, okay, how would, for example, a playlist be, a music playlist be, that would always make you feel tropical? And that's where tropicalization came from. So it yeah. was really a music playlist, how it started, 
And then when Ricardo starts calling the drink, you know, almost 10 years later, Tropical Nation, he was like... The resurgence of, yeah. of, the, of the word of the... And it was the about meaning. the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. concept of that emotion that can be shared not only through music, which we felt through reggaeton, but through a brand. Yeah. And that's where we think, you know, Casa Lu could really be that next Red Bull. Yeah. Because it's about sharing that feeling uh, that is so part of our culture. Yeah. But that resonates with others as well. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things that, like, the biggest reasons I would say that, like, Red Bull has had that success is because they, they're not just like an energy drink. They, they, they stand for something. Yeah. They stand for, like, going out of your comfort zone, like, being daring, yeah. like, right. 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 like, all that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, that's the perfect, I would say, analogy of, like, what you guys is, drink is, trying is, to build. is, is, yeah. is doing for Latinos. Yeah. Right. But, bro, uh, fast forward to, you yeah. know, 2022 or end of 22, 2022, when we kind of, like, when us personally, we get introduced to, to your product, to your product. Br brand, really. And I would say in the best scenario, like that you could, is a fucking reggaeton festival. Yeah. Like it, it was when we first got there, we're like, we're trying to figure out, hey, what's the move? Like where, where, we, where do we have to be? Whatever. And uh, we're crossing to like the VIP section because yeah. uh, shout out the guys at Viva Urbana. They hooked us up. Facts. Uh, and we, we cross like the VIP section. And you guys are right there at like right at, at the at entrance the, at the of gate. VIP, yes. basically. Yeah. And you guys are handing out drinks, and I'm like, and it, well, what first strikes me is just like, like the can, yeah. and and I'm seeing you guys like pouring it, like, and the branding behind like where you guys like were were taking. I I believe you guys had like special like branded like coolers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we did. So that's what first strikes me. I'm like, oh, all right, like, and you usually see like a bunch of these alcohols like giving free shots, free shot, of, yeah. of stuff before. But it wasn't until like we first like took the first shower, we we're like, yo, like this is like a little bit different. Yeah, it's taking. And ever we asked like the, the person, like, oh, what, what brand is this? And they're like, oh, Casalu. Like, oh, okay. Literally, as we're walking to like the the VIP section, or whatever, I'm like looking it up on Instagram. I'm like, I'm like, what is this like? Yeah. And then I see the branding. I'm like, all right, follow, because like I'm like, this is this is like something. Yeah, we immediately knew. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, this, like I've never heard of this brand before. Like, and bro, it, it like. It, we, we went fucking back like a couple yeah. times like throughout the day yeah like, we saw him a couple of times walking like, back and between forth between performances we're like yo I need another fucking shot yeah. of that like that shit, <laughs> was that shit tasted so good like yeah. and bro and, and you guys were in a space where like there was other drinks like there was a fucking yeah. Bacardi lounge like there was like a bunch of like oh that's right oh uh, like, Johnny Walker the lounge the Johnny yeah, Walker like uh, like little uh, bus thing the, yeah the yeah, bus whatever, yeah what it was and like it's a tough space to stand out but I feel like at least from our perspective like the Casa Luz stood out like a lot from mm -hmm. the especially the, just like the flavor, like the flavor profile of, of the drink itself, like mm -hmm. it stood out a lot as, like especially against Bacardi, which is another rum, and they yeah. like, they like to like, like now they have like the the seltzers in cans, like the rum and cokes or whatever. Like, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it before. Like, uh, and uh, it, it actually stood the test of time, which is like one of my favorite drinks is like the, the the. The Tennessee honey and and, and lemonade. Oh, the Jack oh cans, yes, the, con Jack I need to talk about the Jack Daniels, Daniels can cocktail. Yeah. Like the the Tennessee honey and lemonade is to me is like one of the best drinks. Yeah. Because it, it, before I was like, yo, like this is like what gets you tropical. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I'm like, like the introduction to your product that day, I was like, oh shit, like this is like an alternative. Thanks. Plus, it's Latino. It's it's us. Like yeah. it's something that we could kind of fucking own. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. I think that was super cool. So like, how did you guys even get into? Like, how did you guys be like, all right, we had, this is where we had to be. Were you guys at another review about it before that, or this was your first one? First one. First one. Uh, I think we've, you know, how do I say this really quickly, but, like, we've developed a odd talent to be at the right places at the right time. That's, not, that's everything, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's and, and remember, I mean, it started, it started in Miami. We didn't know anyone. We literally did not know anyone here a year ago. Yeah. No one. And six months later, you have tiny drink in Casalu. That's fucking crazy. Like, I'm sorry, but that's fucking... Like, we, it's such we a common trait, though. Bro, we talk, peep, Like, like we, from all the people we've talked to yeah. that, like, have successful brands, it, it always starts off like that. Like, they move to somewhere where, like, they where don't they, know, they, 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 and they, they didn't just know build something they got little by little. out of their comfort zone. Yes. And they're like, I have to fucking figure it out. You yeah. have to figure it out. And That's been the story with a lot of people we've interviewed. Yes. Man, it's like, how does it resonate, right? So, our 
talent is honestly and that we try to develop on a daily basis and we practice like how do we build something that's real that's yeah. different that will resonate and put yourself out there so from the beginning what i mean i remember our first event was a perro galactico where shout out kg punk shout KG, out bro uh, shout out karen who, who gave us that shot i don't think we sold a single fucking can we didn't oh yeah nothing embarrassing yeah, nothing to do with perro yeah, yeah, yeah. itself yeah, yeah. But the place where we did it, it was like a favor. It was our first account. Dude, sucked like for us because we, yeah. we were all excited. Zero nah, sales. Yeah. Dude, it, we were all yeah, we were all there. We embarrassing. Were all we were like, dressed <laughs> up on Casa Lu, <laughs> out samples, and it was a flop. Yeah. And damn, that was the first time. That was our reality check. Like the yeah. first day in the market and it was like holy shit like how do we you know how do you pivot yeah and and just keep hitting it and yeah. and luckily we had friends in the music industry and we just would this it wasn't the keg anymore but it was the cans we would show up with it and talk to people about it and it, and it would resonate so within the music industry you know one person leads to the next and the next to the next and and i think a big part of it, you know, shout out to Alejandro Icuña, who was a Neon 16 at the time and uh, loops us in for a video with Fade. <laughs> Bro, we talk about it all the time where we're like, we would say that if, if Bad Bunny was not the top right now, we think Fade would be, would be, would be I think Fade would be number one. Fade, yeah. bro. Está bien duro, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, what it is. Like, it's just. I don't know. Yeah, what it is about bro, him, La melodía, bro. everything, everything. That's another whole that's fucking that, tangent. Like, I, yeah. I would literally be like, and Ricardo, and Ricardo has been the same way. Like, but because of Tropicalization, I was always want to be the kid that knew the next big artist. Yeah. yeah. And sure. like around 2014, because I look, you know, you can look at your playlist mm -hmm. and I haven't really deleted many songs in like, 10 yeah. years that's crazy and i can look back at the first fade, fade song. song and it was from his first album i don't remember what song it was but but i remember hearing it be like this is the fucking guy yeah. yeah and obviously that sound has evolved but anyway the point there being like alejandro put us in the opportunity to be in this video and it was chris floyd jota rosa who's produced yeah bunch a couple of hits in the Umberano Sinti for Bad Bunny yep. and then Fade Shop and dude shit just fucking clicked someone opened up a cooler that we brought to this video and then suddenly it's people fade, just start passing them around passing them around drinking it bring me more and then for whatever reason Tiny shows up to the set which he wasn't supposed to yeah. drinking it and it, it just got out of control right like that just and that just started happening like over yeah. and over again just yeah. being at the right place at the right time yeah. and and we're very thankful for the people who opened the doors like yeah. alejandro and, yeah and, and we have a bunch of people to think literally so many people that have literally been great great to us and i think the other the other side of this has been you know i feel like the reception has been that big because we were all kind of waiting for that brand that was going to support that type of shit like we would we support like whoever you are like latino if you're trying to do something yeah. like we'll figure out a way to yeah. be involved mm -hmm. and 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 i think that changed a little bit of the narrative we would be like we would talk to people and ask them like hey what, what's your craziest idea like we'll, we'll we'll try to get behind it you know yeah. and so i think that allowed us to really get in places that no other brand were there before because nobody was offering that type of of support you know yeah. if you're not of a bunny Bacardi yeah. doesn't give a shit it, yeah it's um to to Ricardo's point like for example the KG Pons party like we Perro Galactico was we never saw it as a failure necessarily you know I talk about like not getting sales but really when looking exposure. back at it it was like no no that's the thing though like we didn't do it for Casalu yeah we were like Ricardo found it and he was like wait there's a party called Perreo Galactico fuck yes what do they need yeah and we don't have much to offer yeah how can we help and and like he says like every time we work with an artist or we get it in the right conversation yeah. with you guys it's like yeah. what's the craziest idea of yeah. something you want to do that no other brand will support you Casa Luz here for you right. bro shut up that's, that's, that's fucking yeah. real that's, that's how yeah. you that, that, that goes back to like like 
building a community around your brand and especially like the creative community like at, at least the experiences that we've had like everyone's been like always like super helpful and super like you know what? how do we push this forward exactly and that's like a huge thing that it, it it's not a part of miami culture because miami culture is like a little it's bit of the very, opposite yeah. it's like a little yeah. bit of the opposite of that yeah where they're like they don't fuck with you until everybody else fucks with you right <laughs> but it's like this thing coming up that. with like latinos where it's like you know what like no nah, let's fucking help each other out like like there's enough uh because yeah. yeah. exactly no that's that's 100 percent true yeah um so and i think that puts us in a different level of relationship with everybody yeah. we go to because it shows that we care yeah um and it, to us like you know honestly like selling wasn't the biggest priority of our first year really like our first year was really cementing those relationships and building on that brand yeah. and the culture um that is really important to us that's yeah. why we did events that you know in the bigger scheme of things don't make in theory business sense but yeah. like Dude. they make so much sense for the brand mm -hmm. that overall and long term actually makes sense for the business yeah. Yeah. Uh, but those type of things made us think different. And I think it got us to the point where Abibur Urbana, what we presented to you is completely different than what any other brand would have presented to you. Right. And so that stands out, you know, that oh, makes a difference. That our, compounds. Yeah. Our exactly. activation there was a house, right? Yeah, like yeah. if you walked in, you actually had a, a house in there. Yeah. And you had other brands spending 10 times what we spent and... They didn't get that same feeling. <laughs> like it was like... <laughs> Yeah. They, they tried. Didn't, they, didn't <laughs> <get you> tried. <laughs> they tried. They tried. Right. So that's funny. Speaking of relationships, yeah. um, how that relationship I saw you guys, um, the video on Instagram with Ryan Castro. Yeah. Where you gave him that CD. Yeah. How explain, was that like? What that, the yeah, experience? That experience? Mira, eh, Ryan. Eh, shout out to Alejandro again because yeah. he's been pretty much our plug to the music industry, and then he put us in touch with Henry Henry Martinez, who's a really good friend. Yeah, we we. Uh, we, we, see, we see we see yeah, in our lives yeah. every Thursday. I'm in it all the time. Oh, yeah, man. we're, we're dude, there every bro. Thursday. Dude, Henry would totally fuck with this. But <laughs> say less. We love him, bro. Like yeah, yeah, I, I love how he, he does that little live like, segment. Yeah, bro. especially yeah. putting on new every artists. Thursday, right? yeah, yeah, every Thursday, right? Yeah, every Thursday. Yeah. I think last week he did producers. The week before mm -hmm. I did artists. Yeah. And bro, we're always there because it's also like, all right, who's in Miami? Who can we like? Exactly. Who can we connect with? Yeah. So that's like a perfect platform for that. Shout out to Henry. Yeah. Amazing guy kind yeah, yeah, to yeah. us and Ale connected me to him and then Henry was like yo uh, Ryan's one of my best friends so I'll, um, he's a really cool, cool close friend like we'll let's, let's get him some Casa Lu, right yeah and from our side was like you know Ryan was coming from doing the VMAs with Baldwin so Canto del Ghetto, yeah. like yeah. his movement is just very authentic, so Super. we really fuck with that. And then he was having that concert at Oasis, and I just started talking to Henry about it, and he was like, "Dude, I can set this up. I got you." I'm like, "All right." And I think yeah, you were here. Ricardo was here. Um, yeah. We go to the concert, and that package is just very important to us. Like what you see we give Ryan in that video, it's an interpretation of what we think the experience of tropicalization is or one way to express it. Yeah. So, I mean, long through, so, through the history of reggaeton. Through the history well, of reggaeton. So that is a curated... <sighs> mixtape. Mixtape, basically. Um, where we recorded an intro at a studio with a friend and it tells the story of Casalu, but then goes strictly into what we think is the past, present, and future of reggaeton. So it starts with Tego, but it finishes with Tokisha and Rosalia. Oh, yeah. so it's like, it's like the history yeah, of reggaeton in a way. Dope. It's, it's our that's interpretation. It's, it's yeah. 20, 20 songs. 23 from, songs. From like... 23 songs. It's yeah. like 23 years. The regga reggaeton de la mata, a uh, reggaeton like that's coming out now. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like, where is this heading? You know, we finish with two females that yeah. are carrying a different type of flag I mean, yeah. from two different quarters. Yeah. I mean, you're talking Spain and the Dominican Republic. Yeah. yeah. And... There's the, a lot of fucking females like right now that are doing it of crazy. Of course. Crazy. They're, they're killing it. Bro, yeah. we talk about, we talk about um, like some of our favorites like Young Miko. Young Miko. Uh, bro. Right now. Right now. We, bro, I, I still don't know they why. They didn't do I, her justice. Dude, 
we went to a right now set we actually met up with with karen there yeah like she we should have come at the same time but we were like yo like nobody fucking knows like, like this is fucking who right we now. have right like here, this is like yeah like i feel like these people aren't appreciating yeah. Like, yeah well it, her, t- it takes time right Viano, it does like yeah. Viano, Tiano, Viano. like super fucking dope yeah super like, I mean, is like coming up too like she was there there's so many dog, people, so many nice. like women right now that are they're, they're killing it, man. Like, yeah. there's some great not, shit. Not to mention Carol, Carol G. Carol G. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Wow. Now now that, bro. Now <laughs> now <we laughs> now bring her here too. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's yeah. so much. Yeah. There, there's so much to to talk about that. But the point with that package was like, we call it my flow, my tropical. Okay. My my first reggaeton album was my flow dos, which <laughs> happened to be produced by Looney Tunes and Tiny. That's fucking oh, crazy. Shit. It's still the most streamed, not most streamed, sorry, the most sold or copies sold of a reggaeton mixtape till date. Damn. Probably because they stopped making them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still though. That's the last one. Yeah, it was the last one. Well, but. I'll tell Tiny that the next time I see him. But <laughs> the, the point was like, how do we showcase what, what we lived through? And yeah. we packaged it with a disc man. Yeah, that was super. That was super yeah, super I love dope, that. Bro. I and love that little detail. Bro, es un detalle que like importa, bro. Like it's yeah. like yeah, it, it's you see it with like the stuff that like um like like Bad Bunny will put out. Like anything he puts out, it's well thought of. It's detailed. And There's it's, a like, meaning behind it. Exactly, yeah, and yeah. that was like that package was like your version of like this is some this is not just like what anybody else will give you yeah. yeah like this is like something that like they will start and there's there's love behind it yeah and but that's that's amazing totally bro. so you know you're seeing that video that ryan basically gets emotional yeah yeah very emotional because he says hey this is something that i always wanted to have i never had the money to buy this one that's yeah. crazy the this man. And, and like you guys had no way, no reason of knowing that but yeah. it's like yeah, but, but it's like it worked I mean, out we, we send that to everybody we send that to the owner of Total Wine or to the most sophisticated right. investor. Like, yeah. that explains... It's like... This is, this is a reggaeton. Like, this is like an introduction. This, 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 this is, is how we approach... Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this, is, this yeah. is the brand. To, like, this is how we do things as a brand. It's right. really try to get you to feel shit. Right. Yeah. It you happens with the drink, that, yeah. but it happens a lot of different things. I mean, I was thinking about this. Like, this is called the domino table. Yeah. Uh, our first piece of merch that we ever did was a set of dominoes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Green because dominoes. that... Because well, Domino's made us feel that way. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, playing with my, my dad or playing with my friends, like, yeah. that is the same feeling. I don't even need to have alcohol to really get yeah. to in the vibe. Usually, yeah, usually yeah, alcohol is yeah, mixed exactly. in there. But yeah. yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's, part of, it's part of the it, culture. culture. Yeah, that's yeah. the culture, yeah. But it's Super. one of those things was like, you could be having, you know, breakfast at your grandmother's and feel tropical because it's exactly yeah. where you want to be at the right time. Yeah. Bro, so uh, we'll do we'll wrap it up with like two quick questions. Yeah. Oh, true. So, um, f- most recently, as of the time of this recording, it's gonna come out like in a, in a, a couple weeks because we have some episodes backed up. But you guys were just on, on a, a feature product on the Mil Canciones uh, yes. video. Hmm. So yeah. t- tell us about that, like with Abarito Dia and uh, Senzarra. I think that's how you say it. Senzarra. Sen y shout out to Alvaro. Also came from Alejandro. Yo, shout out Alejandro. Yo, Alejandro's the, the goat, bro. The goat. He's, he's the crazy. He, he's the plug, but yeah. um, I think since that first time he plugged us into Neon 16, they they really saw what we were doing, and 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 Lex and and the whole leadership at, at Neon uh, understands what Casa Luis is all about. Yeah. And that's why they've included us so much in some of their, you know, events, yeah. activations, videos, etc. So we we don't do that kind of stuff too yeah. much because we think it might get it gets like diluted yeah, yeah, yeah and and the way we approached it was how can we support alvarito's project yeah you don't oh, okay. have to show the can you don't have to talk about casa Lu. like yeah. that doesn't matter yeah to us it, to to us really was all about like we believe alvaro is coming in and being yeah, like sure. one of those very big artist i mean he's super strong from the lyrical side from the visual sure. side yeah. like he's extremely good and and he's different um so we we see a lot of someone who can bridge that gap between our culture and global culture and you know you can see how he's influenced and the people who influence him and this is a song with a spanish singer who doesn't do reggaeton at all yeah like 
literally, we have a video of interviewing him, and he's like, dude, Sen didn't know who fucking Sayori Lennox was. Like, he's like, that's fucking, no. that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> fucking the Godfather. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. one, of, one of like the, the pioneers. Crazy. Yeah, and he's like, cool, whatever. And then they did this, right? And so anyway, the point there being like, we just wanted to support Alvaro's project, and and. I'm glad we're glad that that the, his team allowed us to to be part of it and yeah. can count us in for for anything that 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 camp needs. Yeah, awesome, bro. And then so to wrap it up, bro. Thank you guys for for coming on. And for like, sure, he, yeah. he, giving us so much time. It's because it's, it's it's been uh, at least for us. I don't know about you, brother, but this has been like a ridiculous. No, time. yeah, that's yeah. A, I've it's I've like been now. amazed this whole but, episode uh, to be honest. What what do you guys see going forward for Casalu? Like, what's your vision? Like for I I don't want to give it a timetable, but like, what do you guys yeah. hope for it to be? <laughs> and that that, that could like, be a, a, mean, like a, lo, a loaded I mean, question. Look, the, look. the straightforward answer is what it's been. And, and, and <laughs> Ricardo again, Laura. I mean, yeah, it's been an amazing journey for yeah. us, uh, but it's only a start. Yeah, because Alu will be the next Red Bull. Yeah, we just happen to be Latinos. Yeah. I love that. Latinos on the top, baby. Really. I love that. Everywhere. It's and going back to the story that we talked about, you know, the name. Um, when we clicked with the name, we were like, "All right, how does Casalu Records look, sound? How does Casalu Football Club sound? How does Casalu like F1 team sound or racing team yeah. sound? Yeah. Because that's what Red Bull has, and yeah. we're like, our brand has to." have that level yeah from the get-go that's the standard it's yeah it's been it's that the vision has always become like it has only become like stronger yeah through time like the more we the more we go through the process the more we realize that what we set out to do from the beginning it was in the right direction obviously course correcting you know how we go about things and do stuff but the vision stays intact you know yeah and so that's why Gabriel answer, you know, we will be the next Red Bull. That is exactly right. So I don't know if it'll be in five, ten years, but that's doesn't matter, goal. bro. Especially like seeing like a like Latinos doing that shit, bro. It's it's inspiring I, for us. Yeah, I'm I'm very big on Hispanic pride. Yeah. You know, I think Latinos they get don't get the love that they deserve in this country mainly. But um, yeah, I support anything Latino. Yeah, and we're, we're here to raise that flag. Exactly, yeah, one thousand percent. That's awesome. Yeah. One question before you guys go, though. Um, if he you was. had a dream collab, who would it be? <laughs> like, it, it doesn't have to be artist-wise. It could just be anything, maybe. Maybe other brands or anything. I mean, they, they, they touched on it with the F1. That's interesting. Yeah, I saw. I heard I, that. I, I started I was getting like, into F1, like, like the, within the last year. And I'm like, I love F1. Crazy. Yeah. And are, are you like, thinking, a green, like a green car? Oh, that'd be fucking dick. That'd, that'd be, be fire, sick. Right? That'd be uh, sick. Are, are you thinking brand or, like, or people? What, like, whichever one means more to you. Like as like maybe uh, all right, let's go ca- artist first then. Uh, okay. Casa Casalu ALDs. Bro, the, uh, yeah. and, you know, if, get these in, 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 in with, with a collab with Casalu. Bro, yes. copping, copping those instantly. Yeah, artist wise, I guess. I feel like that's an impossible. It's so tough, man. Yeah. I mean, it's an impossible question because we see we we really love you know. Everyone. I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm probably like the biggest fashion guy within our team, you know. Yeah. Teddy Santis, what he's doing with ALD, Ronnie yeah. Fai, what he's doing with Kith, or like mm-hmm. even a, a OG right, like so Jevia, yeah. doing what he's done with Supreme and stuff like that. Uh, like, Ryuji with uh, Rude, or Ryuji, how's it with Rude? Ryuji Villa yeah. Senor from yeah. Rude, like there's so many people. We're gonna, we're gonna put you guys on to, to, to Hedris. Oh, we, yes. we gotta show you guys Hedris. Do rags, I don't know. Do rags, you guys USA, I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah. A lot of artists have been He's wearing this stuff lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking dope. Yeah. So yeah. there's so many that I don't know. I don't. I don't know with like uh, one person that I would say. Yeah. If we gotta be an artist, we actually got a list. We do have a list. Uh, let me pull it up actually. Yeah. Oh shit! Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting the exclusive. I mean, this is the easiest way because it's the most honest. Like this. Yeah. Is yeah. 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 Un- yeah. Un- me and Gabriel's chat. This is nowhere else. Right. Um, we keep like this is our I daily conversation, it? right? Yeah, yeah. And and to be honest, like, this is a question that we get asked every single time we're meeting with an investor, because oh, wow. everybody wants a celebrity. Everybody yeah, wants. Everybody yeah. is like, who's the celebrity investor for Castle? And it's like, but we're a community, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It is 
It's, a it's lot just of multiple people who want to see this vision fulfilled. Yeah. And that's why we're approaching it differently. Yeah. You you may have other alcohol brands that hit, sit here and they'll be like, well, this is the one person who, you know, would represent the brand, yeah. the celebrity that represents the brand. But for us, it's now, it's like, we see it as a, as a full um, community. Yeah. I do have a couple brands in mind that I could put on that yeah. list, but... Can I can I say who who I think who I instantly think? Because like, who do you think of? Right, like that's like looking at this, the first person I think of is Fade. Okay, okay. yeah, sure. That's, that's the the green. Bro, he wears green. Like that's his trademark. That's like right. his, his brand. Right, is the green is all over the yeah. place. Bro, Bad Bunny wore a green hat, and people thought he was doing a collaboration with Fade. Yes, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Those that's, rumors that's, were crazy. He really went viral because Be- people thought he was going to exactly. do something with Fade because he wore a, fucking a green, green hat. Never, the Grammys. I've never seen anybody trademark a color. Like, like him, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and then next to the glasses, yes. the yeah, glass, the glasses, like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, big fans of Salomon, which he he's an amazing artist, Fercho, like, yeah. and he loves Casalu, yeah, he actually yeah, fucks yeah. with it. So I, ha- I have the list, I mean, I don't okay. know if this is gonna make it in the final podcast, but we'll we'll figure it out. Doesn't have to, um. We call Los Tropicales, by the way. Los Tropicales, like, that's fire. Oh, okay. There's a whole game. This is the uh, fucking Avengers. Okay. The Avengers <laughs> you know? of Casalu. We gotta and, use and, the music. And look, like, we're looking at people, like, from different sides. Su- like, we really think this shit through. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. there's a lot of these things that we feel, you know, for example, Fate is not on this list. Right. Oh, okay. But not because of not anything, purpose. but yeah. it's like, who do we... Who can grow with us? Right. right. Yeah, he's already like mm. at a certain stage. Right. Okay. So, so the first one is Gendry. I don't know if you know. Okay. No. Gendry is yeah, another no. Dominican yeah, Italian. Definitely. She's crazy in the fashion scene, actually, and so huge respect for that. Then we have Omar Apollo. I know him. Mexican doing crazy stuff. He was now oh. nominated for best new artist yes. this year in yeah, the Grammys for the American Grammys. Um, Quevedo. Of course. Of course. He was on my. He was. He was. Uh, he I was, was gonna name. Yeah, yeah. When when that man, what he did with the last album is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Eladio Carrion from Puerto Rico. Yes. Like go. Yes. Love Jesse him, Reyes from Colombia. Yes, I know her. And then Di Marias from PR, which yeah. is like. But the, she had a song with Bad Bunny. The, yeah. She has a song. Oh. She had the, super eclectic. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In LA, mm. like a completely different like. She doesn't even play in the reggaeton scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's like you know the far fetched collabs that you see from Bad Bunny that are so thoughtful. Yeah, yeah. Are that yeah, I love. And so Di Marias is there. Then we have Rawayana, which is home turf, good friends as well. Uh, they just yeah. do like crazy stuff. Like, yeah, they They're just fun. did a song that Fernando Palomo is in it. So, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> that's nice. you know, that's yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. crazy. Go, yeah. Um, Mauriki, which we have yep. a very cool, close relationship too. Yeah. And I think they do things very different as well. Yeah. So that's kind of like the dream team right now. That's um, dope. That's, yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a good list. Bro. That's not like a that's not like no, a cliche I, list type. No, thing, no, yeah. that's that's a solid Super, list. Yeah. Nah, I fuck yeah, with you it. took me there with the, 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 because, the Marias. I like yeah. Marias. Like but, at least their their feature when I first got introduced to them through like right, like, right, 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 right. That's how I got introduced to like Bukabuya and like bro. It's, of course. That that's the one thing that I I give I give him a lot of, like of, of Benito is oh, like great. Yeah. Bro, he he finds these people and like once I discover them, I'm like holy shit. Like I didn't even know that Bukabuya was the ones that did um the ending song on Timeless for Jake for Jaco. Jaco. Oh shit. Right. Which was like a fucking banger. Yeah. Yeah. Jaco is. I, what Jaco. I love from him is like Jaco. Well, Jaco is a, so it's funny because. I th- I'm pretty sure Jaco came after Fate. So Fate. He used to write, yeah. He used to write for a bunch of. Well, it's one of those things where we're like, like I told you, like always looking for that next artist. Yeah. If there's and two reggaeton artists that we love from like the early beginning, on, it's Jaco and Fate. Jaco yeah. and Fate. Those are the two guys, and I remember clearly, it was like Jaco and one of them got pretty hot, and they were like, okay, fuck it, like I'm gonna start saying that the. My favorite is the other one because yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? <laughs> it sounds least, cooler to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one's the less mainstream yeah. today? And but those two guys are, you know, if we went for something more built up, it would definitely be Jayco yeah. and and El Fercho for sure. Yeah. Dope, dope. Well, bro, uh, we want to take a amazing. bunch of your time, but yeah, bro, bro. We, we appreciate you guys for coming on, bro. It's been honestly, it's been a fucking blast, bro. Like, yeah, it really. We appreciate has. you guys for coming on and like 
sharing your story like that that we i left more inspired no yeah uh, for hopefully, sure like the, the viewers can feel the same where it's like you know what like we can make it as latinos we yeah. can make it and this is just like a, one of those brands that like resonates with our story right. it's like the the american dream for latinos literally yeah and man uh, i mean literally they yeah. came from venezuela this man, and it just this started, man, his green card arrived the day he got yeah. <laughs> Like, that's yes. literally, like, that, bro. That's an amazing story. And they created yeah. something great that's going to be even better, bro. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So, uh, bro, we, we appreciate, appreciate you guys. guys. Is, is there any closing man. messages you guys want to give? You know, obviously, go uh, drink Casa Luda at Total Wine. Facts. Uh, you can find them maybe at whatever uh, festivals uh, yes. that will be coming yes, up. That will be coming up. Don will be there, probably, most likely. But I think the closing message is... From from my end, I think both we both should yeah. do one. But well, first of all, thank you for having us yep. and Anytime allowing us to tell our story. Yep. Uh, we do hope, and you know, as a closing message, that it resonates. And yeah. at the end of the day, is, you know, surround yourself from the right, from the from people who want to see you thrive, yeah. and because that's really paid off for us. And 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 be genuine in how you want to help others. Yeah. And and you it will go a long a long way. Appreciate it, bro. But um, thank you guys again. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, sure. just remember, you can catch catch us at Domino Table Studios on Instagram, TikTok, all that. YouTube. Uh, remember to comment, subscribe. Uh, I mean, honestly, couldn't be happier with uh, this talk. And uh, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Salud, Salud. baby. Para la cultura, Salud. papá. Salud. Man, I love Salud.